Okay, so it's a well-known fact that the BMAT is pretty difficult, but it'll surprise you to know that a lot of people find section two the most hardest section. And that's probably because that's true. It's very interesting because section two only tests you on GCSE knowledge and everyone who sat the BMAT has sat their GCSEs and presumably done all right in them and potentially even done really well in them. But it's the same people who get nines and eights in GCSEs, sciences, chemistry, maths, biology, and physics who also tend to do really badly in BMAT. Well, that's because there are a lot of things that differentiate the GCSEs from the BMAT. And it's the knowledge of what differentiates these two exams that is key, basically, to doing really well. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name's Akshi. I'm a second year Imperial College medic. And today I'm gonna to be talking about why the section two of the BMAT is so tough and some tips on why you can do well on it. Now, as always, we're gonna split this video up into timestamps. So they're gonna be two main parts of the video. So the first half is gonna be talking about why exactly section two of the BMAT is really difficult. And the second part of the video is going to be some tips and tricks on how to do well. Now, if any part of that video interests you more, feel free to go to the description and click on that bit now. Um, but it may be better for you guys to watch this through um, because I get more view time. And also for you guys, um, I think it sort of puts the tips in more context if you sort of find out why this section is more difficult as opposed to just going and watching the tips or just finding out why it's tough. But it's entirely up to you. So feel free to click on the description to find those timestamps and more information. So let's start off with why this section is tough. And there are quite a few reasons, but I've whittled it down to three main reasons. So number one is the vast switching between different types of questions. Now, as you know, the BMAT or section two of the BMAT is made up of 27 questions and that's seven questions from biochem and physics and six questions of maths. And then it's also made up of 30 minutes. So that means that you get just about over a minute per question. And that seems relatively all right, you know, and they're all obviously up to GCC standards. So, you know, why is this difficult? Well, in normal exams, you set a chemistry exam or you'll set a physics exam and you go into that exam, you know, with the knowledge of just that subject and you tend not to think about, you know, the other sciences or the maths or the, you know, history or whatever. And the problem with the BMAT is that you've got to come into the exam with knowledge from every single science. And so it's a much more difficult task than your GCSEs. So, for example, if you've just done a biology question on enzymes and you switch to maths and you switch to sort of, you know, binomial theorem or something like units, that's a really strange jump. You know, you're jumping from enzymes to units and then, you know, you might have to jump back into biology. So it's not as easy as them giving you biology questions or chemistry questions. You know, they will give you maths questions or, you know, spread between biology and spread between chemistry and spread between physics. So in that sense, it's really difficult to be able to switch your mindset between subjects really effectively. And you don't have time to, you know, waffle around and, you know, take time to get into the mindset for maths because you've only got a minute per question and you need most of that minute to actually do the question. So that is probably one of the most difficult bits. Now, as well as this, the BMAT is obviously made to cater to everybody in the country and beyond that, actually. And what makes this really difficult is that they've got to cover information from every single specification so that people who sit, for example, AQA, don't find this exam any more difficult or shouldn't find it more difficult than somebody who sat OCR or at Excel. So it means that they have to have an even spread of information or required knowledge from every single specification. So there are gonna be bits in this BMAT guide or you know what you need to know for the BMAT section two that you won't have come across before because they're not in your specification. And it means that you need to really go through the guide in quite a lot of detail to pick out those small bits of information that you won't know. So for example, things like the heart, which you may not I've covered before and there'll be a lot of small small pieces of information that you just haven't done before in significant detail because it's not been on your specification so that's also why they make it really difficult and with all of this going on obviously it's time pressured and time pressure is honestly so so important to the BMAT if you don't get your time pressure right it's pretty much going to be really difficult to break into those top bands. So what I'm trying to get across here, I guess, is that if you can't manage your time, you're not going to be able to answer questions and questions which you may well be able to answer really easily, which is going to be really annoying because, you know, these are marks that you've just missed out on. And with the BMAT only having 27 questions, one or two questions or even three questions is a huge number of marks. And it's often 0.3 points that separates one mark from another. So it's really important for you guys to have good time management and that is essentially what makes this section so difficult okay cool so that sounds very scary and 
I'll be honest, this is also the same situation I was in. So don't worry if you're a little bit worried about this and it seems like, okay, this is not good. Because there are a lot of things that you can do to sort of navigate your way around this. And again, we're going to tackle each of these and we're going to go through three tips that I've basically summarized. And uh, I, I should have put this into my BMAT a lot more because um, looking back on my BMAT, um, it's not a pleasant experience. So hopefully these tips will help you guys have a little bit more fun you know, during your BMAT, uh, which sounds weird, but you know, it is a different exam. So um, let's just get into tips right away. Number one is to use the 45 second rule. Now, this is a rule that I've come up with um, through looking back at the BMAT and looking back at mistakes I made. And this rule essentially is that you are to spend 45 seconds on every question that you do the first time around. So once 45 seconds is up, unless you're literally a few lines of working away from the answer, or you're literally about to write the answer down, you move on. Um, this basically gives you guaranteed time at the end of the paper. So if you've got 45 seconds per question and you've got 27 questions, you'll have at least five minutes at the end you know, just completely spare to go back to questions that you know that you can do. Because you've gone through every single question, you know the questions that you weren't able to do within that 45 seconds window, and these are questions that you can do. So you'll have differentiated questions that you just cannot do because, you know, they're too difficult or you haven't revised it. And you'll also have some questions that you weren't able to do because, you know, they took a little bit more time and you moved on. So this way, it maximizes the chances of you being able to answer every single question that you can answer. So the next thing is to go through the specification two times. And the reason for this is I say the first time around, you're going to be skimming through it. You're probably going to be picking up on things you already know. You won't really be focusing on it too much. It'll be your first time looking at it. And after this, you'll sort of get a more rounded opinion of what the BMAT is. Now, the second time you go through it is really important and arguably more important than the first time because this is the time that you're going to go through the specification really carefully because there are going to be small details within the specification, small pieces of information that you won't have learned because they're not covered by your exam board. And these are the pieces of information that I want you to pick up on on the second time of going through the specification. Because if you do that, then you're guaranteed to have learned everything that you're required to know. If you go into the exam and you just haven't looked through it carefully, you're likely to not have picked up on information that you need to know. And so there'll be a question that comes up that you just don't know because you just haven't revised that. And that's just really annoying because what's the point in going to an exam where they've literally told you what's gonna come up and in exact details and you just haven't learnt it or you just haven't looked over it. You know, it's all fair game if you have revised everything and you can't answer a question because it's too difficult. But, you know, it's a really big waste of marks if you just don't answer questions because you haven't revised that concept or that idea. Because they've literally told you it's going to come up and you, if you haven't revised it still, why? So really, what I'm saying is you need to be able to go through the specification twice, once to get a rounded opinion of what the BMAT specification is like, and two, to iron out those fine details that you just haven't learned and to be able to go through them and revise everything. And the final tip is really simple. It's just practice, 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 practice. Really, I'm, I do mean practice because honestly, section two, revision takes about half a day. You know, those fine bits like we said previously, that you haven't done in your previous exam boards yet, fair enough. But apart from that, the only thing you can do is to just go over questions again and again and again and again to sort of get into that mindset of, okay, I've got to do this question, I've got to do this question. Okay, you know, I'm struggling on these questions, let me do more of them. And, you know, there's no point of just spending time revising, you know, because it's a waste of time. This is essentially a test of how well you can revise for your GCSEs in a short period of time. And like we always talk about in revision videos, active recall is so important. And the best way to do active recall is to do practice questions, practice papers. So literally the best thing for you guys to do is just pick up past papers, GCCs, literally random questions that you find in books and you should go through them because that's the best way you're going to be able to get good at section two. So hopefully that video makes sense guys and hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did um, feel free to like also subscribe. Uh, we passed 400 subscribers which is super cool. Um, 500 is obviously the big big milestone that hopefully we can reach soon. Uh, it'd be really cool for you guys who maybe aren't subscribed but are watching this video to just hit that red right button and join us and uh, yeah once you've joined us, make sure you comment down below any questions or any queries you've got. Uh, my Instagram will also be here. I'm going to put it here. Uh, so if you want to get in contact with me, I, funnily enough, do reply. So uh, yeah, do DM me on that. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. See you in a bit.